Y'all ready? Okay. All right. Ready? Yep. Good morning. Thank all of you for coming out this morning to a beautiful fall day on uh, the gorgeous campus of Wofford College. My name is Chad Conley. I'm the chairman of the South Carolina Republican Party. I'm joined today by officials from Wofford, also officials from the network, of course. You've got to make a lot of things happen, and the entire Wofford team has been outstanding. I also want to tell you that this would not have come together without a former state party chair who is also and it has endowed a chair here at Wofford College. That is my friend Van Hip. The endowed Hip Lecture Series for International Affairs and National Security was really the genesis of this. How do we bring a national audience to uh, Wofford College and the upstate of South Carolina? It also happened because, and most of you are aware, of what Florida did to South Carolina and the other early states in the uh, nominating process. I've been uh, quite vocal about the nine-member commission in Florida that squeezed the calendar down so much. So for me, as a long, my lifelong South Carolinian and as chairman of the party whose primary focus and gain totally right now is to put on the best presidential preference primary in South Carolina's history and to raise money for that primary, I was quite offended. Uh, I was vocal nationally and in local press letting people know that Florida's nine-person commission squeezed us down to the effect that we lost a month of candidates spending time here, I lost a month of fundraising, but more importantly, the voters of South Carolina and the nation lost a month of getting to know people who could actually replace Barack Obama. You know, I felt strongly that our narrative should be that we need to make sure Obama is the, simply the worst one-term president in American history and I'm not worrying about the primary counter. But because the primary calendar became such a, uh, a focal point, uh, that's kind of been the discussion nationally as well. So my effort here was to put the candidates in South Carolina and to give our voters and our primary voters a chance to really get to know them. So I want to thank you all for coming out this morning. It is true that in South Carolina we do pick presidents. We have a 30-year track record of the eventual nominee coming from the winner in South Carolina. And we surely anticipate that continuing this year as well. I'll be sure to ask, uh, answer questions in just a little bit as well. But I want to turn this over to Dr. Dunlap and say thank you, sir, so much for your hosting this event. We're looking forward to partnering with you. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you so much, Chad. Uh, the mission statement of Orford College emphasizes the unfettered search for truth as an essential part of our reason for existence. And nothing could be more consonant with that purpose um, than holding this national presidential candidates debate. We're, we're very proud to host the event and very grateful to those who have helped to make this possible. And I thank you again, Chad, for all that you have done. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Dunlap. I'll, I'll be glad to answer questions. And I do want to tell you that we're working on things like the format. Uh, we're working on the uh, invite list and everything. I believe CBS is helping to drive that. But I also want to tell you this is going to cover everything from national security to, of course, jobs in the economy that everybody in South Carolina and the nation are, are concerned about. Anybody got any questions? Which candidates have committed so far? Uh, we're anticipating that all the candidates who are invited are going to attend. Okay. Any, any concern about debate fatigue? You're, you're crunching a week there with two other You know, debates. I looked it up, and uh, it's actually uh, it's, it's talked about every four years, debate fatigue, and we've got too many. we got exactly the same number based on what I can tell we had four years ago. Listen, the people of South Carolina and the people of the nation deserve to see these candidates. They have questions they want answered. They want to vet them out. They want to get to know them. One reason South Carolina is an early state and a carve-out state is because we're small enough that everybody that's a candidate running for president can crisscross the state. They can get around our state. It's uh, relatively inexpensive to campaign in compared to some bigger states uh, that are maybe more vocal and have more delegates. So uh, we anticipate them all being here and uh, taking part in this debate. You said you anticipate all of them uh, participating. Does that mean that you've got any official I can't imagine. I can't imagine anybody missing this debate. The first in the South primary, uh, we got an election less than three, three months from uh, this debate. I, I just can't imagine anybody missing it. So we're anticipating everybody will be here. All indications are they're all going to be here. What's the status of the fundraising for the contest? Fundraising is going great. People are responding. Uh, I'm having a great time doing it because I'm connecting with a lot of donors. And look, everybody in South Carolina, I don't care what their political strike, they want this thing to be a success. This is an event, one of the best economic booms that the state of South Carolina receives. All this is virtually out-of-state money that comes here to the state. Uh, studies have shown tens of millions of dollars are spent here by candidates while they're campaigning. 
And so I'm talking to business people, uh, parents, grandparents, activists, and people are pitching in like maybe never before. I think last quarter we had over 700 individual donors to the South Carolina Republican Party. So folks are responding, and we're, um, we're doing really well. What was the backbone in picking uh, Walker Challenge? Uh, you know, I don't know that I could tell the whole story because it's kind of long and maybe boring. Uh, but basically, I was offended at uh, what Florida had done. I, I was quite vocal in saying this really it did our state wrong. Uh, they did the RNC wrong. Uh, Forty-nine states uh, played pretty in the sandbox, as my grandmama would have said, and one state really goofed this deal up. So the backbone was I went fishing. Uh, I started talking to some other media outlets, started talking to some other folks. And I had a conversation with Van Hip, who was a graduate here at Wofford, and I, he's the former chairman of the state party. I was in D.C., and we were talking, and he said, how about Wofford? And we came down here, met with the team here, and I said, you know, look, I've got to make sure that debate just before the primary in Myrtle Beach is, is fine. So I don't want to really do a debate that steps on that. I didn't want to do something that's too close to the coast that would impact and overlap the same donors. So I said, as long as it's far enough away, and it's before Thanksgiving, and that was my pitch to the media folks. And when I met with CBS and National Journal in D.C. a couple weeks ago, I don't know, four or five weeks ago now maybe, and I said, hey, uh, I'd like for you to come to South Carolina. And I'm meeting with a high-level producer that somebody I, I respect a lot and has uh, been around the media game a long time. And I said, when can you come to South Carolina? They said, how about Monday? And that was a Tuesday. So I rearranged my schedule and I said, I'll meet you in Spartanburg, South Carolina at Wofford College. And they did. And they loved it. They love the venue. I mean, look at this. This is going to be quite a spot to put on a nationally televised debate uh, on a Saturday night. Y'all have a football game here that day. So I would be thinking that if I'm a candidate, I'd love to come glad hand with, I don't know, what, 12, 15, 20,000 people. They're going to be watching Wofford beat Georgia Southern. I mean, play Georgia Southern that day. <laughs> so uh, it ought to be one incredible backdrop uh, for a fantastic day. How was the lawsuit from the counties over the funding affecting Look, your plans? State law is on our side. We're totally confident this works out well. We're going to have a presidential preference primary on January 21st, no matter what. Thank you, sir. Thank you all for yes, coming. Yes, sir. Appreciate Thank you all for coming. Appreciate you being here.